Hello everyone, Chip Plus from LCI Corporation, the supplier of the thin film dryer. Today I'm going to go into basic indirect drying theory. I'm going to talk about the mechanism of heat transfer inside an indirect dryer and how that heat is used to evaporate water. So let's get started. Indirect drying theory on heat transfer is nothing more than simple heat transfer. We take a high temperature, which if you look at the diagram is our heating fluid, T2, and transfer that heat to a low temperature sludge, which is T1. We do this over an area of heat transfer of the dryer, which is represented by A, and we account for the thermal conductivity of the material, which is K. Now, instead of the thermal conductivity term, we use a coefficient of heat transfer. This is represented by the letter U and equals the heat, Q, divided by the dryer area times the delta T, or the temperature between the two mediums. Now, in order to calculate how much heat we can get into a certain application, rearrange that equation to say Q equals U, coefficient of heat transfer, times the area of dryer times the delta T of the two mediums. Now, we know U is fixed based on the material and application. So what can we do to increase the heat transfer? We either have to increase the area of heat transfer, which means a bigger dryer, a larger durability, Building, cost, etc., etc., or we have to increase the delta T, which means we have to increase the temperature of the heating fluid. There's only so much temperature or so high of a temperature that we can use on the heating fluid, so it's a limitation as well. Now that we understand the theory on heat transfer and how to calculate how much heat's required, let's talk about how that heat translates into evaporation. To evaporate the water, we need to use two types of heat, sensible heat and latent heat. Sensible heat is temperature increase, and it's very simple to understand. You go out in the morning and it's 50 degrees Fahrenheit, or go out in the afternoon and it's 85 degrees Fahrenheit, you can sense that temperature increase, hence sensible. In order to calculate the sensible heat, we use the equation Q, heat, equals mass, in this case, it's the mass of sludge coming into the dryer, times the CP, the specific heat, and we have to use the mass fraction of the water and the solids inside that sludge, times delta T. And this delta T is the temperature from the incoming sludge to get the sludge up to boiling. Once we have the sludge at boiling, we can switch to latent heat. This is the phase change. This is where we're taking the water and turning it into vapor. In this case, we use Q, again heat, equals mass. But in this time, it's the mass of the evaporated water and we multiply it by the heat of vaporization, HV, of water. Once we have the latent heat, we add it to the sensible heat and get the total heat. In the center, I've, told you, I've showed you a pie graph, and this is showing you that the vast majority of heat required to evaporate water is in the form of latent heat. Thank you for watching our presentation on heat transfer and evaporation of indirect dryers. In the future, we're going to use these principles to discuss efficiency gains and lowering the heat requirement of dryer systems. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at the information provided. Also, please like, follow, and subscribe to our social media.